In Picard Episode 7, Crystal Ball Rio seems to break the Temporal Prime Directive and the Regular Prime Directive at the same time, and he's not the first member of Starfleet to do it. These are all the Easter eggs you missed in Picard Season 2, Episode 7. Episode 7 Monsters starts us far away from where the previous episode left us. Though the former Enterprise captain is still in his tuxedo from the Europa Mission Gala, he's now aboard some sort of space station and being interviewed by a mysterious therapist played by Battlestar Galactica alum James Callis. While he speaks to his patient as any therapist would, there are other clues that something is not quite right. These irregularities include the therapist's outdated Starfleet uniform and comm badge, along with a confusing array of relics on the desk behind him. There, we see display models from different points in Star Trek history. This includes the Space Station K-7 from the classic episode The Trouble with Tribbles, and what appears to be Station Regular 1, seen in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. We also get a glimpse of an unidentifiable Starship saucer, as well as what could be the USS Excelsior. It seems like these might even be store-bought model kits. But whatever the case, it's a nice trip down memory lane and another clue as to the truth of the scene. During his therapy session, Picard recalls events from his childhood and the time he spent in the family estate's arboretum with his mother. During that period, Picard and his mother painted the glass walls with elaborate scenes from mythology, which she then used to teach him important lessons. One of the lessons taught by Picard's mother, there is no better teacher than one's enemy, ultimately comes to have great importance in the episode. She also interrupts the cosplay to give him lessons in leadership. You must learn to lift people up in times of grave danger to lead them with inspiring speech. One of Picard's defining attributes is his penchant for big, inspiring speeches. Whether it was to make a case in defense of a friend in The Measure of a Man, or to lecture a young officer in The First Duty, Picard is perhaps the greatest speech giver in Star Trek history. Q once noted this about Picard himself in the TNG episode True Q. Sometimes I think the only reason I come here is to listen to these wonderful speeches of yours. By the end of Two of One, it looks like the Borg Queen has successfully taken over control of Gerardi. The Queen has wormed her way into the young scientist's mind, accessing her memories and establishing an ability to communicate directly through her subconscious. By manipulating Gerardi, the Queen gets the chemical release she needs to take over her body, and now it seems that there's a quasi-Borg Queen loose in 2024 Los Angeles. At the start of Monsters, we see the queen Gerardi hybrid striding down a major thoroughfare. We know that to survive, the queen needs a rush of endorphins, and we see her smashing a window to get that rush. However, when the scene moves to the inside of a dive bar, viewers see a woman singing with a band to entertain patrons. Those in the know will recognize that woman is none other than Patrick Stewart's real-life wife, singer Sonny Ozell. Speaking with Entertainment Tonight, Ozell said, My appearance as a bar band singer in Patrick's show is entirely his idea. When he first proposed it to me, I have to admit I was a bit reluctant. But when I learned that CBS Studios and the episode's director Joe Menendez actually wanted me to sing one of my own tunes off of my most recent record, Overnight Lows, I couldn't resist the opportunity. Since first meeting Dr. Teresa, Rios has clearly been smitten. Now, the feeling doesn't seem as one-sided as it once was. The Rafi warned Rios about getting involved with a woman from another century, and he has tried to resist. It seems there's no holding back the attraction between them, temporal prime directive or not. With Picard experiencing a coma of sorts, it's up to Talon to use a jury-rigged mind meld to enter his subconscious and attempt to pull him out. However, Picard still needs help from outside, which is where Teresa comes in. Using a 25th century medical device, Rios helps her through a procedure to stabilize Picard, at which point Rios reveals the truth of his origins. When Teresa asks if Rios is from outer space, however, he responds with a line that may sound familiar. Yeah, I just... I work in outer space. This is a clear reference to a memorable line in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, where Captain Kirk, stuck in 1986, sparks a relationship with another young doctor from that era named Jillian Taylor, a biologist at a marine center. Don't tell me. You're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. While Taylor laughs off the comment, Teresa believes Rios, especially after he transports her aboard the La Serena. Kirk does the same later in the voyage home when he brings Taylor aboard to help save the day. Meanwhile, Seven of Nine and Rafi work on the La Serena to locate Gerardi and the Borg Queen. They discover that the Borg Queen has locked them out of the ship's systems, and it's up to them to break the lockout, track down Gerardi, and stop a Borg takeover of the 21st century. While getting down to business, Rafi prepares a couple of cups of strong coffee, setting one down on Seven of Nine's console. However, the former Borg drone keeps working to Rafi's surprise. You haven't touched your coffee. You never don't touch your coffee. Though Seven of Nine was not one to consume caffeinated beverages during her days in the Delta Quadrant, this seems like a nod to her former Star Trek Voyager captain, Catherine Janeway. Janeway, who was a role model for Seven of Nine, was well known for her love of coffee. 
coffee. The finest organic suspension ever devised. In the Voyager episode Hunters, Janeway even claimed that coffee was essential for her to beat the Borg. So perhaps Seven of Nine would be wise to take a few sips to help her stop the Borg Queen from taking over Jurati and escaping Earth. Heading into Season 2 of Star Trek Picard, fans wondered if they might finally get some answers to one of the Next Generation's biggest unresolved plot lines by exploring the rivalry between the Elorian bartender Guinan and the godlike trickster Q. In the Next Generation episode Q Who, Guinan and Q come face to face, and it's clear there is some history between them. This creature is not what she appears to be. She's an imp, and where she goes, trouble always follows. Guinan even makes a unique hand gesture that seems to be a defensive maneuver, suggesting that her people can resist the powers of the Q continuum. In Monsters, fans finally get the first piece of that puzzle when Picard seeks out the 21st century version of Guinan for help in contacting Q. Guinan explains that her people and the denizens of the Q continuum have been engaged in a long and brutal cold war, but have now reached a truce. She also describes more about her people's powers, including the ability to literally bottle a moment in time. This confirms her people are not just familiar with the Q, but have fought them, which is an intriguing new detail in the Star Trek universe. Beyond that, it also confirms suspicions that Alorians can defend themselves against the godlike powers of Q. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.